FreeDOS version 1.3 just launched. So we're putting together a slot one retro gaming PC, testing a bunch of games and we're comparing FreeDOS with MS-DOS 6.22. Now in December of 2016, we reviewed FreeDOS version 1.2 and we were not impressed. Quite a few games would not run and we encountered many issues to do with the CD-ROM driver. So some games didn't detect the CD at all or had issues playing audio CD music. So I began testing FreeDOS version 1.3 with all the games that had issues with the previous version of FreeDOS. First up, we have the Need for Speed. And when I looked at the version history of FreeDOS's CD-ROM redirector, it has the issue actually documented and fixed in 2019. And I'm happy to report that the game is now working perfectly. Wing Commander Privateer was another game that did not work under FreeDOS 1.2. But here it is, running perfectly fine without any issues on version 1.3. Another Origin game, we have Strike Commander. That game also crashed on version 1.2 and once again, it runs perfectly fine on version 1.3. Now let's have a look at some games that had issues to do with the CD-ROM drivers. First up, we have Tomb Raider, a very famous game and under FreeDOS 1.2, no CD digital audio, but I'm pleased to report FreeDOS 1.3, Tomb Raider works perfectly fine, including the CD digital audio. In Descent 2, we had the same issue. The game was working fine under FreeDOS 1.2, but no digital CD audio. And once again, this seems to be resolved in FreeDOS 1.3. It works beautifully with the music playing in the background. Screamer 2 under FreeDOS 1.2, it wouldn't even detect the CD, so the game wouldn't launch. But look at that. FreeDOS version 1.3 has fixed this issue. The game not only launches, we can hear the CD digital audio playing just fine in the background. Fate to Black was another game that had issues with the CD-ROM driver and I'm happy to report under version 1.3 this game works just fine. Later in the video I will touch on the installation as well as the startup menu options and we will also compare the performance. But now let's take a look at some more games because that is the focus on the channel. How compatible is FreeDOS 1.3 compared to MS-DOS? Alien Carnage working without any issues. Battle Chess also no problems. Battle Isle worked without any problems. Blakestone Aliens of Gold also worked just fine. Doom, no issues to report. Doom 2 also worked fine. Day of the Tentacle, also we didn't have any issues. The Rise of the Dragon is another game that worked fine. Turrican 2 worked fine. For this game we had to use the fourth memory option in the boot menu. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis worked fine. Gateway also worked without any issues. Gods worked fine, the Heart of China worked fine. Here we have Lemmings running without any issues. Lotus 3 also works perfectly fine. Uh, Maniac Mansion, that's an older game, also worked fine. The Secret of Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2 also worked fine. Some of these games on the machine we're using today, I had to disable the CPU cache to make them work, but that has nothing to do with FreeDOS. Police Quest 3, also no issues. We have Prince of Persia and Prince of Persia 2 working without any issues. Raptor working fine. Space Quest 1, the VGA version, and Space Quest 5 also worked without any issues. Stunts worked fine. Tetris Classic. We have Wing Commander and Wing Commander 2. For these games, you need to select the second option in the boot menu to, go, to get the expanded memory support. Wing Commander 3 worked fine, Willy Beamish worked fine and also Xenon 2. So at this point, compatibility seems to be very good. 
all the games that had issues under version 1.2 for me, uh, yeah, they seem to be working just fine. And also the CD-ROM uh, drivers have improved. But I did some more testing, some games that I didn't try out before. And unfortunately, I ran into two games that wouldn't uh, run. Grand Prix Circuit is the first one. It just doesn't launch. The footage uh, and the audio you can hear in the background is from MS-DOS 6.22. So here the game runs fine. And the other game that also didn't work for me is Test Drive 2. And yeah, a bit disappointing. Uh, especially Test Drive 2 is a pretty big title in terms of uh, historic relevance. And um, yeah, so there you go. Compatibility has improved, but it is not perfect. MS-DOS 6.22 is still the gold standard in terms of compatibility. And um, yeah, so if compatibility is your thing, stick with MS-DOS 6.22. But FreeDOS has definitely improved. More games should be working than in the past. Our retro gaming PC has a slot one motherboard, an Intel Celeron running at 266 megahertz, 256 megabytes of RAM, which is actually way too much, but didn't cause any issues, a 32 gigabyte SATA SSD with a SATA to IDE adapter. We have an IDE optical drive, an ATR Radeon 9200 LE AGP graphics card, and a Creative Labs Sound Blaster AWE64. Here we have uh, MS-DOS 6.22 and FreeDOS 1.3 going head to head with extended memory and we can basically see no difference. So if you're worried about FreeDOS being slower or anything like that, I can assure you it's not the case. Testing the system with expanded memory across the board, the results are a little bit slower. So if you wanna uh, win some benchmark records, make sure you always use the extended memory option. Um, yeah, so even with expanded memory, we can see FreeDOS is just as fast as MS-DOS. The startup menu worked really well for me. Most games will work fine with the second option. Games like Wing Commander or Wing Commander 2 that need expanded memory select the third option and some games that are not compatible with expanded memory managers but look for HiMem.sys use the fourth option Turrican 2 is such a game and finally let's talk about the installation process so first you need to download uh, FreeDOS and you need to grab the legacy version if you have an older computer the normal the regular download the ISO will not boot on a old computer so basically if it doesn't work for you grab the legacy version like we did for our slot one system. The installation uh, menu is a little bit bare bone and probably the only area where I feel uh, the project can improve. For example, I had a hard drive without any partitions and what FreeDOS does is it creates a heap of two gigabyte partitions but only formats the first one. And if you then plug that drive or SD card or compact flash card into your modern computer to load some games onto it, um, Windows pop up like a Christmas tree. So um, I would have preferred if the installer gives you some sort of an option, maybe creating a large single partition, which I think most of you guys will want to do, or maybe create uh, two or four two gigabyte partitions for older machines just a few more options but the workaround is not too difficult what you do is you start the installation and then quit to the command line run fdisk and create the partitions yourself reboot the machine and then freedos will pick up those partitions offer to format them and then install freedos and you don't need to install the full installation go with the compact one it's all you need to run your games so guys there you have it a lot has improved version 1.3 worked a lot better for me than version 1.2 all the games i had issues with they're working now the cd-rom issues i had before that also seems to have been fixed but compatibility is not as good as ms dos yet uh, test drive 2 is one game that doesn't work and if there's one game there will likely be more games so that's a call to you guys to the community to do some more testing report back which games are you having issues with it can only help this project uh, to improve and the 
other experience was fine. Um, make sure you use the legacy version on a retro gaming PC. There's also a floppy edition. And what I found is the installation was really slow. Even on a slot one machine, it took like 20 minutes. Not quite sure what's going on there. So I recommend you grab the legacy ISO that installs fairly quickly. And yeah, I do wish that the installation menu has a few more options for the beginners. Uh, so all in all, good progress, uh, job well done, but it's not 100% yet. So looking forward to improvements and to the next version. And there you have it guys, FreeDOS version 1.3. So I'm eager to hear your thoughts. Uh, definitely give it a test, report back with your findings, eager to hear from you. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you found the video interesting, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment and I shall see you soon with another one.